himself, but joining us now is the fire chief of Collins, Mississippi, and president of the Mississippi Firefighters Association, John Pope. Good to see you, sir. Thanks for coming on. Glad to be here. Yes, sir. So we got this big event kicking in tonight, 34th annual, and into tomorrow. What sort of role does your organization play? We have been busy all week. The, uh, the fire department, of course, uh, supports with emergency services throughout the festival. Uh, we'll have personnel on duty available to respond to any emergencies that may occur, uh, medical emergencies. Uh, we have had uh, uh, some fire situations uh, at different uh, festivals over the years, small fires, but the personnel are there to respond for any emergency services needs that the uh, visitors, uh, the festival goers or citizens may uh, encounter. Yeah. Well, you don't expect uh, too much in that way, but you still got to be ready. I that's mean, right. That's, that's, it's basically a, a situation where you hope nothing happens, but if it does, you want to be right there and ready to respond. Most of the time for us, the, the instance that we'll see during the festival might be someone maybe getting a little overheated. Yeah. Uh, maybe a, a slip, mm -hmm. trip, or fall, uh, yeah. something like that. Um, and then a lot of times it may be us just helping uh, people that may, uh, you know, be in wheelchairs or something, maybe to help migrate them around certain areas so they can get access. But we have a, a great group of firefighters that uh, that step up and serve the city of Collins and Covenant County every day. And sure. uh, we look forward to continuing to serve our citizens and the festival goers as well. So in addition to your duties as the chief in Collins, you also serve as the president of the Mississippi Firefighters Association. That's correct. And uh, you and I talked during the session, and then I think I saw you the next day, perhaps, in the Capitol, and uh, y you were pretty excited. Some legislation got passed. Indeed. Got that through. That's right. Tell House, us about that. House Bill 521, uh, that was one that, that you and I had several conversations about. And I appreciate the great support of yourself and, and Super Talk listeners that assisted with that because it was truly a group effort. It was not just fire service personnel that reached out to the legislatures and uh, let them know how important it was, but it was general citizens of the state of Mississippi that knew that it was a positive uh, positive piece of legislation to support the fire services and helping to keep our local community safe. That bill uh, did pass. It was signed uh, into law by the governor here in Collins. He actually came to the fire station in Collins I didn't know and that. held a that? Uh, bill signing. We were very surprised when they called and asked if he could come to the station. Yeah. And so we held an event and uh, had uh, many of those that were, were key to helping to get it passed were there and be able to witness that piece of monumental legislation. And what it will do is provide a length of service award program to volunteer firefighters in the state that meet uh, required criteria. They'll get a $500 uh, defined contribution into a account in their name uh, mm -hmm. under the care of the state treasury. Mm -hmm. And then it will compound interest. And then at the end of their service, when they withdraw those funds, they'll get a lump sum payout of the $500 each year plus the interest earned. Gotcha. And, and why is this important exactly? I mean, you and I have talked about it, but to tell the audience, why, why is so, it important to have that program in place? Well, what we've seen, unfortunately, uh, it's across the board in volunteerism, not just in the volunteer fire service, yeah. but in, in volunteerism as a whole, is that, you know, not as many people are able to step up and volunteer as they used to could. Hmm. Uh, over 80-plus percent of the state of Mississippi and the United States are made up of volunteer firefighters that serve those communities. Hmm. So... We have to keep those numbers up to keep the community safe. Sure. So by doing this, this is a little incentive uh, to help to reward those for volunteering. Uh, the the equity that they're putting into it is their time and service. Sure. And then these dollars are going in, and some would say, well, that's not a lot. It's 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 something. It's a start. Yeah. Uh, but it is once once they've served that time, and they get that, that is a little little boost, a little reward. Uh, and a thank you. It's a it's a very small thank you for them for their service. But the, the 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 fire service provides such a great deal of services to the citizens throughout our great state. And this is just one thing that we were able to uh, to work with the legislature uh, and and be able to see it come to fruition. Related to that, John John Pope is our guest, the fire chief of Collins and president of the Mississippi Firefighters Association. Related to that, how is your department and others? across the state doing with respect to their staffing levels? I think that uh, all departments are, are always in need of additional personnel. Right now, um, we're probably uh, we're probably about 
85% staffing. Um, we, we're a combination department. So Collins has uh, volunteer on-call personnel and paid personnel. So we have a complement of each, and they work together. I tell people it's kind of like the um, – Think of it like the the Army, the National Guard, and the Army Reserve mm -hmm. components. Um, and so, for us and departments throughout the state, you're always trying to fight the battle of maintaining personnel. Sure. Um, you have people that are finding opportunities to go make more money. Uh, you will not get rich in public safety. You won't get rich as a law enforcement officer and a firefighter financially. Uh, you can feel good about the services that you provide. And at the end of the day, know that you're truly trying to make a difference in your local community. Yeah. Um, I've been doing this for, for 26 years for a living uh, and, and total between as a career firefighter and starting out as a volunteer. And I'm very proud of the service that I've been able to provide and proud of the services that our firefighters and law enforcement officers throughout the state and throughout the, the, the country provide. But it is a as a daunting task you're constantly it's sometimes it feels like it's it's one step forward and three steps back instead yeah. of two yeah. uh, but we're, we're maintaining um, and ensuring that the citizens uh, have the services they need that they're protected and then when they need us and they make that call we're going to respond and we're going to take care of the situation at hand sure and then the physical assets the the, the trucks the other tools supplies equipment etc et uh, how are you doing there and I, and I know that uh, a great deal of that uh, relies on the Mississippi uh, the Department of Insurance. That's right. involved a lot of that. That's correct. In Mississippi, we have the uh, the RIFTAP program, which is the Rural Fire Truck Acquisition Program. It's a, a great program that allows for uh, municipal departments that have rural jurisdictions they protect and then county departments to be able to access dollars to help to uh, pay a portion mm -hmm. of the funds for a cost of a truck. We've seen huge increase in the cost of fire apparatus. Um, you know, we've seen some increases as much as 150 or 200 thousand dollars more in the last five years in the cost of some of these apparatus. Wow! Um, so the equipment costs go up as everything does, um, and that is a, a difficult thing to balance, especially you know, when you have so many needs. Uh, so you try to make sure that you maintain your equipment as best you can, uh, keep it in a state of readiness, but also be preparing when you do it to make those investments. Yeah. Uh, it's it's expensive, you know, to outfit a firefighter in a set of protective clothing, head to toe with a self-contained breathing apparatus, their turnout gear, helmet, gloves, boots, etc. You're talking anywhere from twelve to fourteen thousand dollars. Wow! To outfit a firefighter wow. head to toe, just the breathing apparatus is between no eight idea. to nine thousand dollars now. I'll be darned. And you 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 can't go interior and fight a right. structure fire without a breathing apparatus. Right. They've got to have their turnout gear. Just the turnout gear alone is over three thousand dollars now. So I mean, and it's 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 a it's very expensive, but we want to make sure that our personnel are safe sure. to be able to respond and provide those those services because they're stepping up and and saying, you know, I'm willing to do this, so we want to do what we can to make sure they're protected as best they as best we can and provide for them. Something else, uh, Chief, that uh, is uh, under the scope of the Department of Insurance is the fire academy. That's correct. That's right. How does that how does that work out for you? Do you, uh, do you think we that's have a good a, system? We have a great fire academy in the state of Mississippi. Uh, if you turn off of uh, of the road that the academy is on, it says number one fire academy, USA, and we truly believe that it really? is. We have one of the top fire academies in the United States. We train thousands of firefighters every year at our state fire academy, both on the volunteer and the career side and the industry side, and in recent years have started doing EMS training at the academy. Mm -hmm. uh, but our, our fire service uh, can be very proud of the fire academy they have, the instructors and the staff that are there. Our facilities are, are second to none. Uh, we just uh, finished doing the ribbon cutting on the new uh, dormitory and fire station facility on the grounds. Going to allow us to be able to house even more firefighters for training, meaning even more training hours for our firefighters in the state. So just a, definitely a, a shining example of how fire service training should be done. I know Commissioner Cheney it, it definitely has a soft spot in his heart for it and is very committed to ensuring it is of the highest quality in producing. Indeed. Uh, is that your finding as well? We do. He's, he's been very supportive of the fire service uh, ever since him first coming in as the insurance commissioner and the state fire marshal. 
does a great job and we're just very proud of the support that he provides for the fire service and in fact what i usually sense is that he wishes he could do more that's you know, right he's, he's, he uh, it's, it's the impression i get but chief we appreciate your service sir and appreciate you coming on and being with us today and i know you guys will have a very successful and and problem free oklahoma river that's right. festival and they need Collins. to come eat pancakes with us in the morning from six to ten at the fire station oh my gosh pancake that's awesome. breakfast that they need to awesome. come do that <laughs> The Fire Chief of Collins and President of the Mississippi Firefighters Association, John Pope, has been our guest on Middays. We're in Collins, Mississippi at Worldwine Ford and Lincoln. We're coming right back. Stay with us.